Amos chapter 2. Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of Moab. Alright, so we're picking up back to chapter 1. We just moved to a new chapter. Now what we've done is, we've gone from north to the mist in the Dead Sea region, east of Israel, between Ammon and Edom. And Moab is the other child of Lot. We talked about that last night. Ruth comes from Moab. So we're getting all these regions. We haven't left anybody out. I will not turn away the punishment thereof. Okay? It's what it's been. Because he burned the bones of the king of Edom into lime. So, and you read a lot of different things that people that they believe and what it could be said. It, and this looks out that it was murder. And it was fierce. Limelight. When burned, it has a very bright brightness to it. But I will send a fire upon Moab. And you've seen that expression again, over and over. Now you ready for this one? It shall devour the palaces of Kiriath. Now you ought to make a note that Kiriath is in Moab. David's great, great, great grandmother. I don't know how many greats there is. Comes from Moab. Okay. Do you know a name in the New Testament that matches carry off? Judas Iscariot. Judas Iscariot. Iscariot means a man of carry off. Judas was a Moabite Jew. And many as myself believe that he is going to be that false prophet in the tribulation period. A lot of people think, you know, think about, think about and the disciples that Jesus had, was, you know, he had one of them was a Canaanite and, and African descendant. And you know how Peter felt about the Gentiles. Judas was a half-breed. Moab shall die in tumult with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. War. Battle. I will cut off the judge from the midst thereof. There's a judge judging. God says, I'm going to end that. So there's judgment going on in Moab. God says, I'm stopping that. I will slay all the princes thereof. With him, the judge. I don't know if this judge is doing a good job. Saith the Lord. So, what we learned so far is that when God is going to bring judgment upon a nation, he also involves the leaders. Now we see judges. And if you remember last night, I said the president and the senate and the house and the supreme court justices are going to be hammered by God one day. Thus saith the Lord for three transgressions of Judah. Now we're in Israel. Now we're down south of Israel. 
Now we're into God's people. And for I will not turn away the punishment thereof. They get the same condemnation, the same judgment, the same words. They are God's people. But don't think, hey, 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 don't think, because I'm God's people, I'm a child of God, and God loves me. I, I'm going to get special privileges. No, you're not. Too much of the Christian thing today they oh, I'm a Christian, I can do whatever I want. That's it. I can listen to what I want. I can read what I want. I want to play what I want. Uh, whatever. Eyes, ears, nose, the senses. Because they have despised the law of the Lord. Okay. Well, that was their that was their calling. You could not apply that to Damascus, Gaza, Tyrus, Edom, Ammon, Moab. They weren't under the law. But the Jew is. The word of God that God, it's the word of God, the law that God gave to them through Moses. Christian, one day God's going to judge you by a book, and that book is going to be the King James Bible. Well, what if you were before the King James Bible? The Geneva Bible. You're going to be of the family of the, of the Western Church of Antioch Bible. You're not going to be in the Eastern Church of Egypt, Westcott and Horde. Codex Vaticanus and Codex Senecatus. You're not going to, this, this is garbage. As Judah will be put to the law that God gave them, we'll be put to the Word of God. 66 books. Today's church age. Not so with, you know, the, the first five churches who didn't have the complete Bible. Listen, if you think Jesus and Paul had a completed Bible, you're a fool. The law of the Lord and have not kept his commandments. So, God gave them something in writing. The law is Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. And God gave them the Levites. To train the people between holy and whole, unholy. Between right and wrong. And the Levites didn't do what they were supposed to do. And the children of Israel did not do what they were supposed to do. Like the Christians today. And have not kept his commandments. Their lies has caused them to err. The lies of the church today is causing Christians to err. To say this prayer, that's a great error. That will have someone think they're going to heaven and end up in hell. A great error of the church is that, you know, on Friday Jesus died and, and Sunday he arose. You don't know how to count three days and three nights. I sure hope you're not in counted. Or your job requires math and counting skills. One of the things is that, you know, the church is under tithes. That's a great error. I heard today, you know, someone talking about with the rapture. They say, well, you know, you can't find the word rapture in the Bible, you know. And like, you know, you, you, you can't find VBS, you can't find Sunday school, you can't find nursery in the Bible. Yeah, okay, but look where all that stuff is today. VBS is wicked. I mean, you got VBS, you got church competing. Not for the souls of the children, but look how many we have over what you have. But I'm not going to get into that. It's an error. It's not for the souls of the children. It's more of a, you know, how many children we can get? 
Why can't you do that stuff? Why can't you have a church function without counting the people? Why can't you have that? You go to Sunday school and someone counts your head. After the witch, their fathers have walked. So look what happened. There's lies. There's error. And it came from the fathers. You know, the Lord tarries. The, the lies and the airing of the church today is going to go to the children tomorrow. Because it's what the children learn is what they learn from the fathers. And woe be to the fathers that teach them lies because the children are going to teach lies. You know, we had this great mess in the NIV and the New King James because somebody taught them that's the Word of God. Lies. Well, no questioning why, why is the blood taken out? Why is Jesus taken out? You are taught in the church today, you don't question. You can't question God. Well, if God is chastening you, if God has put you through something in your life, it would be very wise to say, God, why? I'd like to know so I can learn. I can correct. I can get some knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. There is a way of asking God why. I'm not, you know, if you're being chasing, well, what do you think you're doing, God? No, no. God, what did I do wrong? How do I get out of this? How do I please you. <clears throat> An heir of the church today, well, you don't need to repent. You can keep sinning. And you know, I hear people say, oh, we're the rapture, the rapture, rapture. I really don't believe they believe that. Because they would not be living the life they're living. I think it's just kind of play on words. I don't, we'll know when, when the rapture happens and the judgment seat of Christ. We'll know. I could be wrong. I think it's just become kind of, a, 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 it, it's, it's in the script of called Christianity. And if it's, you're saying, oh, I know the rapture is going to be imminent. I know the rapture. And if it's become a script, that's an error. That's a lie. But I will send a fire upon Judah. Boy, he does. Babylon. Roman, Rome, Titus. And I would devour the palaces of Jerusalem. Notice the palaces. They're living high on the hog, except for Judah. They can't live high on the hog. They're living high on the cow. Did you read the New Testament, the Gospels? They went to the high priest's palace. Have you seen the luxury that the Pope lives in? Thus saith the Lord for three transgressions of Israel. That's north. So what we learn from Amos 1 and 2, Amos is a man that lives in Judah. His message is going to be to Israel. In the first two chapters we pick up, just because you're the children of God, Israel and Judah, you are. You are God's bride, Hosea. Don't think that you can get away. I mean, if you're in school and your dad is the principal of the school, don't think you can do things wrong in that school. Well, you know, my dad's the principal. <laughs> Well, son, if, if you act up, there was a time, there was a time that your conduct would be, okay, Mr. So-and-so, we see how your child, we don't think you're a good principal of the way your child acts. And they say that about children of, of the bishops, Paul writes Timothy. I've seen some of these Minister children and all that. 
I've seen their lives outside. You ought not to be in the house of God teaching the people. You didn't teach your children. So don't think just because you're a child of God. For for I will not turn away the punishment thereof. Because they sold the righteous for silver. And the poor for a pair of shoes. Now is it literal pair of shoes? It could be. Or just a teeny tiny tidbit. First of all, if you're living right. And the government shuts you up and puts you in prison, Jeremiah. If they banish you, if you read Hebrew, and when you come to the Hebrews where it gets the end of the, you know, it, it really doesn't give the particular of the names. And they'll say, you know, they, where they saw asunder, they'll say that was maybe Isaiah. They don't know. Good men. They were put into caves, dealt in sheepskin. You know, you read that. That's what's happening here. When Elijah is sent out by Jezebel for, I'm going to kill you. And that Ahab was looking and, and, and questioning everybody where Elijah is. And if anybody would find Elijah, I, 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 there's a price on his head. Or if we're just going to tax the poor and you know keep them under our authority with taxes upon tax. As something, in, as a, I mean, again, is it really a pair of shoes? Or is it God saying the tiniest little bit of thing? Alright, well, what could it be? I'm going to, uh, this is just whole numbers thrown out there. I'm going to pay you $5 a week to do your job. And with your rent and your electric bill and your groceries and your insurances and all that, it's going to cost you $4.98 a week to live. And then what Satan in the world come up with this other thing, they've got this smartphone, and, and, you know, we, we, you know, I, I got what was one time, I saw, somebody stole my identity, and they bought a $700 iPhone. I think it was. The bank called me up right away and said, that, that ain't you. I said, thank you for calling. But who would pay $700 for a phone? And, and I, I, I watched this reality program, I can tell you what it is, you know. And then they're talking to this woman, her husband is now going to jail. And she's going to be thrown out. She can't pay her rent. She's got no food for the children and all that. And I just got just enough money for cigarettes. What on earth are you buying cigarettes? If you can't even put food on the table. But you see, what I'm trying to say is they 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 they, they and, and they know they put stuff in, in tobacco products to make you want more tobacco products, so you become addicted to tobacco products, and you spend your money in tobacco products, and yet the government says, you know, they put a little warning. No, no, what they're doing is they're making you self addicted. So you live under their thumb. Well, that's where God's going to come in and attack the president and attack the House and attack the, the, the Senate and attack the Supreme Court justices and, and say, hey, how come you put those people under tension? How come you didn't get rid of the alcohol? How come you didn't get rid of the, the, the tobacco products? You said they were wrong. You said it was wrong. You said it was wrong, but you still kept it. And only for the price of taxes, you're guilty. You know, the, the Proverbs writes about and Jesus spoke about that you're to pay your people enough money, supposed to pay them every day, not once a week, for a living. 
And I like how, how these people come up, you know, the capitalistic system, Jesus, every man got their penny and all that. And, man, these people they're, they're, today, they're sticking up for guns. You know, guns don't kill. Well, what is people shooting that's killing people all month? They ain't shooting bubble gum. You know, my teacher said that guns kill. Well, you know, my pencil gave me the... You're blinded. You're blinded for the little thing. What's a gun? You ain't going to have any guns in heaven. But we don't have the police protection because the government, because the police department has these mobile bus RV crime lab centers. And everybody wants 15 to $20 an hour. That pant after the dust of the earth. What is the dust? You know what the dust of the earth? I swept my room last night. And I put it in a pile and I got my door bigger because I, I can't bend over and pick stuff up like that. But you put it in a dustpan and you put it in the garbage. You know what God says about his people? You want the very little dust. You want the minute thing. What are the minute things of a Christianity today? Oh, we're going to have a good green grass lawn for the church. We gotta have the right colored coffee that matches the pew. And then meanwhile, you're dead. You're a dead church. On the head of the poor. Again, the poor, they're beaten, they're hated, they're they're gonna easy control because they ain't got no standing. And turn aside the way of the meat. They're living right. They're trying to do right. Get, get out of here. You know, they, they, they go properly before the people of the land, whether it be the, the city, the town, the state, or the government, and they make a petition. You know, I really think, you know, I think this intersection, I think we really need a red light there. Uh, we got other big things important. Now what? You know, and then what, in the black room, oh, where, where are we gonna have the, the the gay pride this week? Where are the colored people gonna meet for their picnic this week? Where is the chamber of commerce gonna have our big meal? We had a person come knocking on our door, and. We thought they thought we had a dog, but there's dogs in there. And someone's dog got loose. They came over down there, and I got our dog pregnant. Where's the animal control? Well, for our area, which I know, you can't call animal control after hours. Excuse me, Fido. You can't get in trouble after 6 p.m. to 8 o'clock in the morning. Knock it off, Fido. And he's got to have a big fancy truck to drive around with a big fancy pay. And then you're already done with his budget for the week. We've seen dogs bite people in front of our yard. And two people that they had, to, they still have dogs. They're, they're still, they're going to cause ruckus. And well, what what is poor people? I, I try to have uh, speed bumps put on our road because the speeding vehicle. Oh, we can't have that. And somebody came by speeding, went right across the road, and caused a, a major accident right here in the main road. And when that cops came running, I walked to that cat's to that cop's face, bare feet, which I wasn't supposed to be. And I told that cop, I said, I've been complaining about that. That cop says, "We, oh yeah, I know. What did they do about it, officer? What do you think they did about it? Nothing. 
I went to the people that, that, that got hit. I gave them the name of the person that I was dealing with. Turn aside the way the meets, and a man and his father will go unto the same maid. <laughs> well, that's definitely against the law. Doesn't he say he was married? Just made. That's that's your modern Bible for Mary that, that gave birth to a child. Did you know that? That's what the modern Bible say, the, 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 the Amplified Bible say, that Mary said a virgin. <clears throat> this is a girl. She's young. She's sexually involved with a man and his son. It doesn't say a man and his father for his wife or for his mother or his daughter-in-law. It says that in the law. To profane my holy name. So what's that today? That's the Southern Baptist Church. Oh, we had a whole bunch of people, sex offenders in the church. And we hide them. We, we, we didn't tell anybody. It came out. And what are you doing? About How many have been turned over to the authorities to be arrested? As far as I know, none. How about the Catholic Church? And their priests abusing altar boys. And the the unsaved in the world and, and those who hate God. Oh, look at that. I guarantee people today who hate God, they, look what the Southern Baptist did. Look what that pastor did to that 16-year-old girl. What Stalin got to say? I say you rake them over the fire double time. Just because they know the Bible and they ought not to know what they were supposed to do. And they still did it anyway. Profaning the God. Profaning the name. Profaning the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, the beat at the Southern Baptist Church and shut their doors. You wicked and vile. Don't even know what Bible you have. I know. I attend the Southern Baptist Church. There's no others around here. And they get up there. Oh, you, you, I, as long as you read any Bible you want to read. <laughs> What's your Bible say about the sanctity of a man and his wife? What does it say about a man and his wife and to be a bishop or an elder of a church? That your church ignores. Huh? And they lay themselves down. Hey, you better believe I said it. And they lay themselves down upon cause to lay a pledge by every altar. You say, what's that? The closest thing I can see to that is prayer mats. Long before the Muslims. There's the altars. Every altar. Every Baptist church has got an altar. And then they're throwing clothes down at that altar. Then they're getting on those clothes and they're pledging... I was in church here in in uh, Norman Beach. They it, they had signed pledge form. I definitely warned my family against that. They can, you know when you sign their pledge form, they can take you to court even if you left that church. The other way to get somebody signed to pledge, you, you give them a tithing. We're going to have tithing month. We're going to challenge God to give this month the tenth. I've been in a church like that too. Now I've been in a church where they laid their clothes down. But I guarantee there's, there's somebody that does something like that. 
and they drink the wine of the condemned in the house of their small G-O-D. Some, you know, there, and I don't think it's wine as in as in liquor or drink. I think it's like that cup that fills up. That there are people who are condemned by God, by the Word, by the law, and they're in a house of small G O D, Catholics, Muslims, Baptists. Remember what Jeremiah said? Every street in Jerusalem had a, had an altar. Every almost every main thoroughway in Daytona Beach, there's a church. And I guarantee there's an altar. And, and you know, I, I know about every time you pass by a church, pray for it. You got to be kidding! I just posted today. I, I read two Catholic churches are, are closing. I put up my Facebook. They're closing. I mean, you. Amen. There's two things that get me excited like that in the world. When when a Catholic church closes, a Jehovah Witness Witness place closes, or or a package store, or a bar, I get excited. It destroy I the end. Wait a minute. 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 You know, this time there is no fire. For Israel. There, there is one for Judah. Look at verse 5. I'll send a fire upon Judah. Israel has no fire. Yet destroyed I the Amorite before them. The Amorite is the one that's in the land. We'll go back to Genesis. And Genesis. Just read it today. It's in here. Just read it. I just read I do that's interesting. been lost in the pages of history. Second, but you know, but, um, I 
นมากนะเอ่อ anyway there's there's a place where it says in Genesis that God's given them a land of the Amorite but the Amorite sins have not been full Land is given to, to Abraham, and Abraham says the children are going to be in a land that's not theirs. They find something like that mark. The biggest lie I tell myself is I don't need to write it down. Strangers in the land, that's Egypt. Okay, yeah, here it is. Genesis 15. Verse 12. When the sun was going down, deep sleep fell upon Abram. Lo, a horror of great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety the seed shall be a stranger. In a land that is not there, that's Egypt. That's Egypt. And shall serve them, and they shall afflict them. Egypt, uh, uh, Exodus, 400 years. Also that nation shall serve, I will judge Egypt. After they shall come up with great substance, Exodus. Thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace, death. Thou shalt be buried in a good old age. But in the fourth generation they shall come hither again to the land. For the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. Alright, back to Amos 2 9. The Amorites are in the land with the other Canaanites. And what has happened is God has a cup for every nation. And when that cup gets full, like Sodom and Gomorrah, Nineveh, Babylon, Rome, Nazis. God destroys that nation. America has a cup. England has a cup. Poland has a cup. Russia, Ukraine. The Amorites have a cup in verse 9. Yet destroyed I the Amorite before them. When Israel came into the land of Israel under the power of Joshua and God, those nations of the Canaanites, including the Amorites, God was finished with them. They were done. Well, why did God kill them? Well, why did God destroy those people? Because of their sin. Why did God destroy Sodom and Gomorrah? Because of their sin. You couldn't have two men walk into their city without the city wanting to have sex with them. Where do you think America stands? Jeremiah told us that Judah was to the point with all the troubles and the problem. What did they do? Where did they turn in their problem? They went to the Queen of Heaven, not God. God said, I'm warning you. I'm 
warning you. I'm warning you. All right, put Jeremiah in prison. Protect him. Here comes the act. Here comes. Your cup is now overflowing. It's done. Belshazzar, you're sitting there. You're drinking out of my cup. You're feasting of the gods of wood and tin and plastic and China and Taiwan. Your cup is full tonight. Every nation's got a cup. I don't know where America's cup is. They are having gay pride in Jerusalem. They had it during Jeremiah. They had it during the prophets we're talking about now. And God said, that's enough. Whatever that breaking point of sin is, all the sin, sodomy, no regard for God, rebellion, adultery, fornication, You know why all of a sudden all this stuff is coming out of the church right now? God's showing you. See, we don't have prophets. So God's making it new at the Southern Baptist Church. You guys got a sex problem. Where'd you get that from? Look at verse 7. A man and his father will go unto the same maid. That's a prophet telling you, hey, you guys having sex with the same woman. Hello, press? Yeah. I got a little story for you to report to my Christians. What's that? There's a big sex problem in the church. Put that in the newspaper. Because the Bible's closed. You can't add any more to the Bible. They just recall strawberries. They just record... I forget what it was. Something today that they're recalling. There's no formula. The grocery stores are, are bare. All these sins are coming to play. Roe versus way, uh, abortion, sexual perversion in the church. People killing people with guns. All the crimes that's happened in New York, the subways. The violence has filled the land. Welcome to the times, and we looked at it before. Look at the times before, as in the days of Noah. You know, it's not recorded, but I can imagine the hard times Noah had with his sons to build that ark with the world that hated him. I wonder if there were times they showed up to the work site and the tools were gone. Or maybe the lumber was set on fire. It said Noah preached to the people, and I know when you preach to the people, I know they don't preach it. I know they call the cops at 911 every Saturday when I preach. So yet destroyed the Amorite before them, whose height was the height of cedar. So he's, he's one of the giants. Today, the giants of today, I know one pastor, oh, the basketball team. Whoa. And we'll wear the basketball jersey and all that. I know that. Their sports team. Their Facebook. Oh, their sports team. He's strong as the oaks. Yet I destroy. It wasn't Israel. You know, you know what Israel said when they went in the land? Yeah, people strong as the head. We're just like grasshoppers. I said, okay, I'll take care of them. I destroyed his fruit from above. That's his children. And his roots from beneath. That's his grounding. He had no standing. He was like a tree. Wherefore, by your fruit, you should know them. They weren't good. I can imagine what fruits those... Canaanites had in the land. That the church today tries to have good fruits and evil fruits. Tries to have a good tree and a corrupt tree. 
and I let my light shine. Uh, your neon artificial light. You know, if you use a candle, that's still natural light, that fire. But if you use neon lights and fluorescent lights, and that's artificial lighting. I brought you up from the land of Egypt. That, that's what we just read in, in, in uh, Genesis. That's what God told Abraham. What we are reading, God is fulfilling. God is confirming. God is saying, this is what I promised Abraham. I read that today. It's a quinky dinky when I study the word of God, how the word of God plays out. In my life. I brought you out of the land of Egypt. Genesis did not give you Egypt. The name. I led you 40 years to the wilderness. And to possess the land of the Amorite. That's the land of Israel. Cana. I raised up your son to be prophet. Of your young men for Nazarites, I raised of you godly men. Is it not even thus, O ye children of Israel? Say, Am I talking about anybody else, Israel? England and America, at a zenith of time, sent missionaries out all over the world. I'm upset. I, I usually support Israel mi missionaries. I, I send them double money for tracts and then for Bibles. For outreach and for Bibles. And I can't, by their website, I can't send them money no more. This is two months in a row. My bank sees it as a threat. It's probably been attacked. As Israel is being attacked. So I want to look for a, another nation I can support. Look at. I support other missionaries on my own. I'm an independent fundamentalist Baptist. That goes to a Southern Baptist church. How's that? I sit in the pew and I hear the pastor. Oh, some independent stuff. You know, brother, you, you're talking to one. In your church, I don't know who you support as a missionary. In my home, I know who I support. I read their letters. I'm mad at one missionary right now. But that's a little tiny thing. What are you going to do? So, but, now watch this, 12. But ye gave the Nazarites to drink. You, you gave Nazarites wine to drink. That was forbidden by the law while they had that Nazarite well, listen, we're going to make ourselves pure for God. We're going to be clean for God. There was no grapes, no no raisins, nothing on the vine tree, no wine, no intoxicating liquor for them. No. Listen, here. You're going to ask right here. Drink. <clears throat> Remember that prophet that was in Israel? God told me to go Another way, don't eat or drink here in the land. And that false prophet brought him back and lied to him. And then that lying, it killed him. I commanded the prophets, why don't you go out there and preach them? Why don't you go out there and teach them? Saying, prophesy not. Guy goes out there, hey, I'm going to tell you what God said. Shut up! Jeremiah, you shut up. I'm going to put you in jail. Oh, that's the word of God? Give me that flyer. Elijah, tomorrow your head is going to be like my prophet. Get yeah. You know who gave me the biggest problem? Street preaching? The claim of other Christians. 
You're turning other people away. It's not what my church did. We let our light shine. Uh, funny, you don't know the Bible because that's exactly what Jesus did. That's exactly what Paul did. Behold, I am pressed under you as a cart is pressed that is full of sheep. You know, here's this cart. It's got all the sheep. That's heavy. And the sheaves on the bottom of that car are squashed and pressed. There's a lot of weight. God says, you put me under a lot of weight. You burden me. And I'm trying to help you. Listen, I sent that guy in there to teach you that you're doing wrong. He has the facts. He's got the evidence. Yes, I'm speaking about myself. He's got the proof. He's speaking from me. He's got the right Bible. He's teaching you. He tells you where he's borrowed the information. The information is correct. But you won't listen to him. You won't adhere to him. You make a mockery. You make a joke of him. Oh, you just... Why won't you listen? You tell him to shut up, ignore him, you give him a hard time. Then you come to me, try to tell me to shut him up. I'm the one that sent him. Therefore the flight shall perish from the swift. Now that guy that can go quick, he ain't going to go so quick. In the tribulation period, Jesus said, Woe be to if your flight be on the Sabbath or the winter, when the planes will be grounded. The strong shall not strengthen his force. And just because you got muscles, because you can lift weights, oh, hey. I'll give you a disease where you can't even get out of bed. I'll give you a cancer, and a cancer treatment will just wipe you out. Neither shall that mighty deliver himself. Oh, we got the greatest army. We got the greatest. Okay, Belsizer. And how'd you wake up in hell? <laughs> Had a little too much to drink last night, Belsizer, didn't you? Neither shall he stand that handleth the bow. You gotta stand to handle that bow and God's gonna get for whatever reason you're gonna make you can't stand. And he that's swift of foot foot, you can run quick, shall not deliver. You're not gonna go so quick. You're not gonna be able to walk. You're not gonna be able to run. Neither shall he that ride the horse deliver himself. Uh, whatever, that horse will be dead. That horse is going to be sick. That you can't get whatever. You're not going to be able to use that horse. God is going to turn everything against you. He's talking to his Israel. He's talking to his people. This is the history of Israel. The the. the, the the Ninevites are going to come. The Amorites are going to come. And they're going to take you captive. And you ain't going to do nothing about it. Amos is a prophet to Israel, not Judah. And he that is courageous among the mighty, look at me, look, you know, the, the braggart shall flee away naked in that day. Notice the in that day. There's that in that day. Write that down. Highlight it, whatever you do. That's second advent passage. Say it to the Lord. He's going to drop all his medals. <laughs> You know, when you rebel against God, you're going to be naked, church. 
the wood, hay, and stubble is going to burn. You're going to have ashes. God don't reward ashes. He calls one of the angels, or even yourself, that'd be humbling. Judgment seat of Christ is over. But you ask, what do I do to hell? Over there in the, in the corner, in, you remember what a dustpan is? What's that for? Can you imagine that mighty, high, great pastor of a church? Ooh, the great worldly pastor. And all his works burn because he hasn't done nothing for God and Jesus. And there's that pile of dust, uh, of uh, ashes. What do I do with it now? Over there is a dustpan. I'll have somebody in my church. Oh, no, no, no. You go over there and get yourself. Sweep up all those Tootsie Rolls and all that praise and all that worldly honor. Because remember what Jesus said. Don't be like the hypocrite. You know, you pray out in the street. Oh, look at me. I'm going to pray. You got your reward. Oh, look at me. I'm giving money. I tithe. Look at me. You got that's your reward. 1040. All right. Let's see. It says, this is how much I gave to the church. All right. That is your reward. I hope the government's better than God. He's not. Fasting. And listen, I know this from church. Oh, our church, we're going to fast. We're going to fast for four days. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And Friday, we're going to have a dinner. Wait a minute. Are you doing the Catholic thing three days and three nights from Friday to Sunday? Because four days being included on Friday and having a meal on Friday, that's not fasting. Guys, the fact is that, oh, you know, that this, this one church, oh, we're not going to marry you because you didn't come to our, you don't come to our fellowship. Go ask Lisa. We were called in the pastor's office. He told us outright he was going to marry. He said, well, I'm not going to marry you two. And we asked, why? What's the problem? Because you don't come to the fellowship. Brother Frank Spalman, Open Door Baptist Church, Walker Tuck, Connecticut. Call him. He says otherwise, he's a liar. You gave a name. So did Paul. So did Jesus. So did Moses. We were told we weren't going to get married because of fellowship. It wasn't a, it, We didn't run involved in a sin or anything like that. We didn't sin against God's church. The church is not being taught today that Hey, you know, your sins will be going to bring back ashes. Everything, oh, Jesus is coming. I can't wait till Jesus is coming. What if he's going to pull that belt out in the judgment seat of Christ and whip your hiney? My pastor didn't tell me about that. My Sunday school didn't even tell me about that. Your Bible told you. Well, I have a I have one of the modern Bibles, and and that's been changed. Uh huh. Did you know somebody in church who was a King James only? Yeah, but I didn't like him. The pastor told us, you know, private, it, it, just get along with him, you know, because this money's good. We'll get a reward if we be humble. I've been in churches like that. Just just be nice to him. He'll go away. Yeah. 